Discrimination at work based on race and or gender is a pervasive and ongoing issue in all industries, from tech to transportation, and this includes animation and entertainment as well. Today, I want to discuss six ways that you can practice being an ally at work, particularly if you're white and or identify as a man. I hope to offer a range of suggestions so that whether you're an artist or a CEO, you will have a solid action that you can do almost immediately to support women and minorities in your workplace. I should emphasize that these suggestions are based on my own experiences or things that I have witnessed at work and greatly appreciated. They are not necessarily one-size-fits-all suggestions. If you're not familiar with the term ally or are unaware of racial and or gender-based discrimination in the workplace, I will leave some resources in the transcript of this video where you can learn more about inequalities in the workplace as I'm neither prepared nor qualified to speak about these issues in the short videos that I make. So first, I want to talk about ways that I have personally experienced support from allies in the workplace. First step, we have recommend women and minorities for roles and promotions. There have been a few times in my career, regardless of industry, where someone has recommended me for a promotion or a role without me asking them to do so, and it has made a positive difference in my career. I really appreciated this because to my mind, it is a compliment that someone not only recognizes the work that I'm doing, but that they would go out of their way to make sure that the person who makes major hiring decisions and controls the budget knows about it. If your workplace is hiring or in the process of promoting from within, recommend and support the work of women and minorities, particularly if your workplace is rather homogenous. For example, if everyone on your team is white or everyone in charge of big decisions is male. If you're putting together a crack team for something like a test project and the boss asks you who should be on it, if you think this would give a woman or a minority a chance to shine, say so. Next, we have be a reference or give a recommendation. Connected to the previous point, I have also really appreciated instances where people offer to be my reference or have given me a recommendation on things like LinkedIn without my asking. While I'm confident in my abilities and skills, I also still feel a little awkward asking someone for something for myself because I know people are busy and they don't like writing or they don't like talking on the phone to reference checkers. Maybe this is just me and whenever someone offers to be my reference, I really, really appreciate it and it goes a long way. Next, we have give educational opportunities or resources. I've experienced this in a few ways. The first example is of professional development opportunities. At my last studio, for example, the leaders thoughtfully considered and provided free professional development opportunities by bringing in speakers at lunch to give workshops. Second, I have received actual physical resources. Very recently, my own father-in-law gave me a stack of career development books to read. He read these as part of a book club at his own work in an industry completely different than mine. He knows I'm always keen to push myself to become a better leader, and so these books are a great resource for me. Lastly, a huge way I've been supported by allies is through mentorship. This can look like a 40-minute informational interview where I pepper them with questions. It has also looked like an extra 10 minutes after dailies to draw something on the whiteboard so I can better understand what X concept is. It has even been as brief as showing me a couple of hotkeys quickly. Now for the second part of the video, I wanted to share a few ways I've witnessed support from allies that was effective, particularly from my perspective as a manager. First, let someone else do the talking. If you've been talking for a while in a meeting, press pause and invite in women's expertise and opinions. When you're trying to solve a problem, it's not about being right, it's about working together to come up with a solution. Another thing I've seen is sticking up for people in meetings or gently refereeing for a second. It can be as simple as, sorry John, I think Jane was about to say something. Jane, go ahead. Next, listen. Connected to the previous suggestion, once you open up the floor, listen. Hear people out. Give them space to share. Listening to someone builds trust and shows that you value their thoughts. I find that listening also creates a nice domino effect. If you do it, others are likely to follow. And then suddenly, someone who is just a PA gets a chance to exercise their own leadership skills. Lastly, give credit where credit is due. If you're impressed by the work of a woman or a minority, say so aloud to other people in the room, particularly if there are people present who are in charge of decisions like promotions and raises. I've been in managerial roles for the last six years or so, and believe me, it goes a long way just to get someone's name out there. If you are inaccurately or partially credited for the work of someone else, especially if it's the work of a woman or a minority, make the correction and clearly state who is the talent behind the shot you are seeing or the report you are reviewing. It's the integrity move and is a small, effective way of supporting folks in your workplace.